There's political philosophy. Well, with the dawning of 1600 BC, yes, that very infamous time in Mongol history, we have our first great general. And we've got Trung, who permanently reduces my empire's war weariness by 25%. Now, she's amazing because she powers up to medieval units, which includes, which includes my unique units. So she will be very, very useful for the longest time. When she's not useful, 25% war weariness reduction, that is really, really good when I plan on going to war for basically the entire game. I My entire strategy is to be not chill. So that is going to be incredibly helpful. She is an amazing pickup and a good source of era score as well. Government wise, this is where my choice gets a little bit controversial. Oligarchy with unit experience and extra combat strength for melee, anti-cav and naval melee. That's really good if you're fighting with a lot of those units, but I'm going to be a predominantly cavalry based army. We're nowhere near fighting and plus four combat strength against barbs of my warriors. It's not really the best. Instead, I'm going to focus on the growth of my cities, including my capital, which is currently showing four amenities. So if I were to now go and change to Classical Republic, I would get extra great person points, more general points, and we'd keep all of our cities happier. It also means I've got a wild card policy to put generals in. I've got urban planning and we can put cards like settlers, builders, diplomatic league, all of the really useful stuff. Late game, I would rather have this card, the Classical Republic Legacy card, because one amenity on 100 cities is really, really good. What I'm not going to do, however, is worry too much about the barbs. Yes, plus five combat strength would be really handy on discipline. I don't necessarily need it, need it, but they are proving a bit tricky. It's whether or not I want to go for the general points immediately. I'm playing the long game. I'm playing the long game. Yeah, I'm going to put generals in. So generals, urban planning, ilkum for build. No, we're going to go for settlers. And then first envoy counts as as two. There are a few city-states on this map. Not many, but there are a few. And I want to see if I can get all of those bonuses. Look at this. The walls of China are being built. wonder why. wonder what those were built for. Let's treat myself to another archer. We can get that delicious kill there for you. So, you know, you're fine that you can survive an attack because you're fortified. We'll get that kill on the barb camp. The slinger can take that out. And then we will just keep on attacking for a little bit. These horsemen are being pushed back. This is why I wasn't too worried overall about the barb invasion. I feel like we have a bit of a handle on it right now. Whether or not it stays like that, I don't know. But for now, I feel just a little bit confident, especially with the archers. Before we go to war, I need to make sure that equestrian orders and raid have been unlocked. And we also want to push to monarchy as fast as we can. 14 gold per turn now for my cotton. These deals get better and better. There's horseback riding. It's a big tech. The Ordu. Horsemen generally. Excellent stuff. Okay, barbs. Barbs, uh, they, they have no chill. We're still fighting. We're, we're pushing them back in as many places as we can at the moment. Yep, Discipline is looking like an increasingly useful card, I won't lie. But that's the Barb Camp defeated. Just snuck around the back whilst I was fighting in the other direction. That one attack, two attack, pull you back for a little bit of defense, move you to that, keep the builder around because no doubt I'm going to get things pillaged. I'm going to use the general who's a bit useless at the moment just to try and absorb barbarian attacks. Barbs love to kill great people. It doesn't kill them, they just pop up somewhere else, but they love to think they're killing great people. It would be tempting to attack Russia right now. It would be very tempting, but I'm not going to because I'm getting all of my luxuries from them. But, oh, it's just a settler wandering around. I could try and get in and out with the scout. This could be the thing that actually wins me so many points. But then the problem is, is if I generate too many grievances, I lose this sort of early game trading that I can do right now, which is relatively useful. I think we've got to take big, bold plays though, don't we? Has Russia been denounced by anybody? Ludwig has denounced Russia. Oh, he's going to make me pay for a war though. Okay, that decides it. The, the Just a random little surprise war is going to cause me too many grievances and I will regret that in the long run because right now everyone's market is open. We can sell whatever we dig up out of the ground and that is hugely important. More important than a random saddle. Like, there's another one here. The game is really tempting me now. Oh dear. Don't. Don't threaten me with a good time. Oh, we have a lot of units being killed right now. I think I might need to just cave to pressure just for a few turns and pop discipline back in my government. Not that I think it's particularly useful as a card, but it's better than nothing. Go on, get a kill, get a kill, get a kill. Oh, 
97. You've got to be kidding me. What did I say about the great general though? This horseman couldn't help itself. It could not help itself. I'm going to move you to there now and try and get the horse archer to move and attack that unit instead. Oh, Russia's denounced me anyway. Oh, come on. I, I left your settler alone. Oh, Korea likes me. Maybe we can start actually dividing the continent up into alliances and factions that we can take advantage of. That could be something we do. If we can get Korea on side, maybe Russia becomes an easier target for me. Russia's really trying to spread their religion over to me. Work ethic and crusade. Oh, <laughs> oh my lord. Roman Holiday, if you have coded your AI to bring crusade over to the player, I cannot tell you how proud of you I'll be. I, I will be so proud. Oh, maybe. Maybe maybe it's what we're going to see. Let's put researcher in. That means my science is going to go from 12 to 20. Amazing. We've got marble. We can now sell, which is another chunk of gold. How much until we can buy our Ordu? 480. Oh, it's close. No one's buying Diplo favor yet. That's a shame. Just need 43 gold. 43 gold. That's all we need, everyone. Done. There you go. And Ordu. Bought. Unique building. The capital can now start pumping horsemen out at vast quantities. So we'll put maneuver in as quick as we can. Yep, the horse archer took the bait. Again, I love how predictable that is. It's so funny. What should we do now? Let's uh, lure them into going to this tile now. First horseman will now be built. We need as many of these as we can. I mean, already this looks like impenetrable land. Kublai's gone heavy on holy sites. I'm not entirely convinced that's what I would have chosen them. I would have liked them to go lots of science, pick up a few campuses myself. We're looking also for merchant points. This is something I want to unlock soon. We're going iron working now so that I can unlock swordsmen. Then we're going to go writing into currency. I'd like to get as many trade routes as I can because what I want to be able to do is go bam, trading hub, and then as I mentioned before, just go boom, 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 and go all the way down to the south and then run in and take all these cities. It's an ambitious plan. It's a crazy plan. Some people thought it was a silly plan, but no, it's perfect. You just need to know why. You need to understand it like I do. Oh, barbs are attacking China down there. Did you see that? Oh, ho, it's not just me with a barb problem. Good. Kublai's on the warpath and is now taking cities from Wuzijian. Okay, interesting. Good to know. And my barb repelling army has done a great job. Garrison archers, upgraded battle cry, warriors, horsemen on the way. Loads of cool things now. Do we get another encampment going or do I just rush a couple of... I'm going to rush a settler in a few cities. We're going to go horseman settler, settler here. Then I'm going to go for watermill settler. Get three out, go to six cities and then we'll look to attack. I think six cities will be a decent base. This is a very powerful level one warrior. And now it is a powerful swordsman. My first iron unit, which is great. Something hopefully I can use against this barb horde. Now I've got a garrison archer, so it's really effective. We're going to try and take out this encampment next. Just pulling my units around as they heal. Everyone is so damaged though from my last set of fights. So I'm having to be a little bit careful. But this swordsman makes this so much easier now. First kill for my great general. Excellent. Little chunks of era score here and there. It's wonderful. God, the barbs are everywhere. I was tempted to make friends with Germany, but look at how many versions of China Germany has annoyed. Yeah, the Europeans showing up in China. Who would have thought it? Not a popular move. Russia really have rushed me with their religion. They've come so far across the map, it's ridiculous and I love it. Yes, I will take your religion. Yes, I will look after it and enjoy it. I promise. I will not abuse it. Hmm, <clears throat> maybe. Oh, my first horseman. The first horse. So we've got a settler, got a settler, we've got a settler. You may notice as well that every city now has a water mill. So we're setting ourselves up for long-term success here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven improved wheat. We have loads more possibilities as well. We've got extra rice. We've got wheat. We've got wheat. There's, there's all kinds of resources here. Just focusing on my capital is, is a, a really good move, I think, here. Just making sure we've got everything we need. There you go. Crusade has been put on my cities by Russia. How do we feel about that? Good? Hmm. I don't know if good is wor the word I would use here. So where do we want to focus our settling? Yeah, sources of horse. There's one up there. There's one here. There's two there. These are the sort of places I want to send my settlers. And also, we're, we're pulling closer to the borders of China. They've got really strong cities. But there's two waves to this. We don't necessarily have to conquer on our first wave. That The main thing is the pillaging. That's kind of what's going to be the main economic benefit to all of these wars. So if I was to go and settle up in that direction, and settle up in that direction as well to claim that source of horse, then we'll have a look and see if there are any good luxury locations that are good to settle in. Yeah, somewhere in between, actually. So furs over in that direction. Yeah, I could go and settle over there. I'll plonk it down on that tile and hope that we can get close but we'll, we'll see it's quite a long way this is a very stretchy empire once i take out some of these barbs i'm gonna feel a lot better about my chances here horseman comes in gets the kill okay yeah we're, we're pushing them back a little better than i was 
fearing. Go on, capital. Have another tile. Yum. I need my capital growing at max pace. Absolute max pace to get most use out of Pingala here. I realize I should have moved off currency before I did because we're now into the boost zone. We'll come off that quickly. That cattle. I don't know what that cattle has done, but that is the second time a drought has appeared on that exact tile. These are like devil spawn cattle. They're not eating grass. They're drinking the very life soul of the earth. That's what they're doing. Don't trust them. Never trust them. Barb camp defeated. Another three era score. Oh, it's good to see. It's so good to see. My capital has produced a settler. We've got two more settlers on the way and we know the three locations I want to go for. One, two, three. Barbs are in the way of all of them. I'm not even joking. So we will have to send my army with my settlers or in advance of my settlers. That's okay. We knew we were going to do that. We've been healing them. We've been preparing them. I'm saving up on all of my iron and horses. So we should have plenty of strength to go and spread out now. Let's get this first trader going as well. I want to get the boost for the trader because we've got a lovely plus four camp, uh, sorry, commercial hub that can go down in that city. And that'll give me some more era score. One good thing is that no one likes Kublai. So if we do go to war with Kublai first, we should be able to get a pretty grand coalition against him. It's my, it's my hope anyway. Treat myself to another swordsman to escort my settlers with. I'll send two settlers out with this band. We'll go one, two settlements like that. Both are three of loyalty pressure and then this settler will head up with this army to there. Oh, then we'll have at least three or four sources of horses. I'll be able to pump horsemen out at lightning speed. Okay, barbs have uh, been dealt with to an extent and the settlers, I don't really need too many more right now. So settler card, out. Discipline, out. Don't need either of these things. I'm going to put instead maneuver and we can get our horses up and running as quickly as possible. Urban planning is still pretty useful and I'm going to get plus two gold per turn from my trade routes because look, there is one right now. In fact, actually, I'm just going to switch my walls to another city because my capital should be just focusing on getting horsemen when it's got the horses to do so. We'll get this trader over to Mongolia as soon as we can. Better unlock military training and all of those beautiful cards and then we'll focus on going down to get the two governors and then boosting to monarchy. All of my cavalry or my light cavalry will be going down depredation because I'm a thievy little cheeky scamp and I like to pillage. You know this. Everyone understands how Ursa Ryan likes to play the game. He says, hey, you've got some lovely things. Congrats. Can I borrow them? It's not a not a question. It's more of a sort of loosely worded uh, fact of what's going to happen here. By the way, if the trader gets pillaged, that doesn't matter. This actual yield has got no importance to me whatsoever. The main and only thing is the fact that now we have a trading post in this city. I'm going to put this merchant point on it just so that I remember there's a trading post there. And then we'll send the trade route down and see if we can go as far down Kublai's empire as possible. If we can get a trading post down in Shendu, it means we'll be able to do all of this without losing that combat advantage, which would be great. Five movement horsemen. <laughs> That's without the great general or any promotions. I love it. I love playing as Genghis Khan or Mongolia generally. It's a lot of fun. Okay, we are now moving north, sending my army ever to the north to just escort this settler. And it's righteous and merry path. And in the meantime, another commercial hub will go down. It'll be beautiful. Seeing as I can't do anything else in terms of building army from my capital right now, I think I'm going to do the next best thing. And again, either go for a campus. Plus one on campus is rubbish. Let's go for a commercial hub. Put it up here. It's pretty useless tile. It's again, trade route is what I'm going for. The other bits of the, of the commercial hub, it's kind of all useful, but not necessarily important. Oh, oh, Germany, Russia, both with settlers in this direction. Very interesting. Maybe we will be fighting somebody else. Mm. If I just show you the, the available routes I've now got, look at all of the people I can now trade to just because of that one trading post. So <laughs> all of these cities are now fair game. Germany's got a huge amount. In fact, everyone's got a huge amount. The only person that doesn't is Wu Chen. So we can't think about that too much. It's more just who do we think we're going to get momentum against? I have no horses. So maneuver right now is useless. In Instead, I will put oh, conscription would be quite useful, but I think I'm going to get equestrian orders. Build up my supply of iron and horse. I just need I need as maximum amount of both of those things. Pushing through on the barbs. Barbs are doing nicely. This great general is massively helping. Should be able to settle over in that direction. And are we going to say that this city is probably optimistic? <laughs> 
<laughs> it's probably optimistic. I'm going to actually bring this one back and settle near this spice because there is actually a load of farm work in this direction. So we'll go and, uh, yeah, I'm going to go and settle on the spice and then we'll just improve this middle territory. At least my cities won't be so far away from each other at that point. Oh my lord, look at all these settlers. Maybe I should engage in a bit of warfare with Russia and Germany with, with some horsemen. I just bring them all as close as I can, as quickly as I can. Steal some settlers. That would be as much uh, use to me as actually taking cities because these cities in the north are all totally, well, they're undefendable. Nothing you can do. Nothing you can do. Dortmund. Hmm. Russia's just declared war on Korea. It's an interesting choice considering how many settlers you've got out in the middle of nowhere right now, Russia, but I like it. Oh, 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 oh. Right. Hang on. We can do this really cleverly. Settle on marble. Get some era score for doing that. Russia's now at war with Korea. Korea. What I'll do is I will move my swordsman to this tile to ignore zone of control. Then I will go to Korea and say, hey, can I join your war? I will give you one gold. No? How much? <sighs> You're going to want like tons of gold. Why do you want like a, a full blooded trade deal? Will you give me some stuff for marble? All right, fine, I guess. Let's do that. We'll declare war on Russia, generate a few grievances, then go to Russia, find out who they've met, including Germany and Kublai, and then say, hey, you people want to join. Oh, Kublai doesn't want to join in. Come on, Germany, you know you do. This would be the chaos move. Yeah, there we go. So both me and Germany are now at war with Russia. And now I don't have zone of control. I move in and take the settler. How cool is that? Come on. You got to admit, that's a cool move. Better throw walls up quickly, eh? <laughs> Better throw walls up quickly. So engineering is now ready to pop. I, I need to just go for stirrups as quick as I can. Apprenticeship into feudalism. And we are boosting that way now. It's a lot of stuff that's going right at the moment. So we're not actually going to go and attack any of Russia's cities right now. It would be too far out of my way. So we don't need the combat bonus from sending them a trade route. That was basically just a play to steal a settler. We might be able to steal a second if I use my army quick enough. We'll see. China's going to decide that Mongolia is now a bit of a threat up north. That's okay. We accept that as just part and parcel of being an aggressive cheeky fool. So pushing my units forward. Settle another city with some spice and immediately put a lovely farm down. Oh, the yields in that city immediately are amazing. Who wants to buy my spices? Yeah, you do. Go on, you want to buy some more? Yeah, you do. Oh, us is rich. First thing I do in this city, it needs to work all of these sources of horse. So I'm going to buy a monument in it and then a builder like that. So we've now got really good growth on the tiles. It means I hopefully don't have to buy too much stuff. And um, we'll get this attack in. You can see, unfortunately, this is where the plus six combat bonus from Dirty Plus AI really kicks in wildly. But I think we've done okay. And now where do we send this settler? It's marble down there with some lovely wheat. There's some more luxuries, but it's settling closer to Kublai. Could be a thing. Or we can try and go for the original place. I think Russia have got quite a large army. That is the problem. Let's have a look at luxuries. Yeah, let's go down for that marble down there. I don't think that's too bad an idea, actually. How many can we have open borders? Is that something I can do? Two gold? Yes. Lovely. Let me through. I want to come after Russia. The fiery heart of chivalry beats in my shoulders. Shoulders? <laughs> Ludwig's shoulders has got chivalry in them. I mean, look at them. They, they do look like lovely shoulders. I beg you not to tempt them into absolutely glorious acts of daring do. Oh, I love you, Ludwig. I'm passing by. I genuinely am at the moment. I've got no plans. No plans right now of attacking. I can't guarantee that'll last, but right now yeah, you're fine. Do I make friends with Germany? Mmm, this is the thing. This is the thing. I think my Mongolian wrath has got to be directed at China as the major opponent here, but it's whether we take Dortmund on the way or go for... I mean, Korea and Germany want to be my friends, and the thing is, I'm going to need allies. I'm going to need trading partners. You know what? Yeah, I will take friendship with both of them. We can get at least one military ally out of them, get some combat strength, have somebody to really be pumping my economy this whole time. That's probably going to get China to now denounce me, because they're none of them like Germany, but we don't mind committing on one side of this war over the other, you know? Oh, I just lost uh, two units there. These barbs are brutal in this direction. I lost an archer and a swordsman. I'm just, I'm trying my best to settle this settler out there. I think I'll be fine, but I've lost a couple of units doing it. But hey, we've managed to expand quite nicely. That is city number six. We have another luxury that can be sold immediately, this time to Kublai. Got another swordsman. So we're picking up units really nicely. The horses are 
almost online. Almost. Goobly don't like me anymore. Oh dear. The horses. We have more horses. Two sources. That is wonderful. Where did this Russian settler go? Come and show me where you are. A new era and the commercial hub gets put right into it, which is wonderful. Defensive tactics is also quite appealing to me right now, but the golden age. The golden age. Russia. Dark age. England. Dark age. Oh dear. England. That might not work very well for you. Where are you? Hong Kong. Oh, very, very close to not being loyal. What do we want to do? Technically, religions are still available, but I don't think we're going to be worried about them too much this game. Monumentality is always good. Free inquiry. Now, this is something that could be better than it normally is because we've got four, six adjacency on commercial hubs already. That would be six extra science and bigger boosts to keep me competitive. Monumentality is useful because if I start pillaging faith or gold, I can use it on my economy. But I think I'm going to be wanting to get army. So free inquiry is what I'm going to go for today. I don't know if that's the right choice. 35 science feels a little better than anything I've had up to this point. So we'll, we'll, we'll have to work on that. Tell you what, these barbs are unrelenting. I'm not having much luck here. Do I just try and settle around the barbs? I think I might have to, you know. Pingala. Grants. Perfect. Pingala is now set up as much as I would need him to be. Next up, I'm going to take Victor and bring Victor all the way to Imbrasia so that I can build units that are extra promoted. Now that will be amazing because when I get spies, I'll be able to get a promoted spy, try and do a single mission, and then get something that can give me plus 12 combat strength against the opponent. Now that would be huge if we can pull that off. I don't see where this Russian settler's gone, you know? I think it, it might have been eaten up. Yeah, it's like it's gone. Never mind. I would like it if people send me fewer grievances. Beautiful. And we're going to say, luxury-wise, that Amber should be banned. I have no votes in this Congress, by the way. Oh, they stole my settler. These barbs are ferocious. No turtles. England gets double grievances actually that's quite funny i lost another archer to that skirmisher which isn't good but i've claimed my settler back i might just have to settle in place and just accept whatever's being given to me here you know we have three sources of horses now i think that's enough i don't think we need to worry specifically about the exact placement of that city maybe we go get the iron instead or we just take this settlement there yeah i'll settle in place i think i'm gonna settle in place there just come up with something defendable yeah sod it i'm just settling up here it's not the perfect city it's not at all but at least it's something that's relatively safe. Relatively is by far the most important word here. Pyramids. Imagine pyramids as a pickup. Oh, that would be beautiful. Okay, Russia's still got a lot of troops running around. I'm not going to have much luck trying to pillage them just with a single horseman, I don't think. There's construction. We have a lot of unimproved forest in my capital. Already 28 production, but we can get this higher. Yeah, construction's a really good pickup. An apprenticeship is about to get boosted next turn. Feudalism is going to get boosted in three turns. We are not far off Kashig's and Knight's now. Now, this is a really good combo. An extra mine. It's all mine. Ha ha ha. Especially because mines now give an extra production. So we've got a bunch of very productive cities now. Someone buy my Diplo favor. There you go, Germany. You know that my Diplo favor is very fun. We'll get a second Ordu and I will start to print more horsemen. More. More, I say. Stirrups as well. Oh, yes. It's going to be a really, really tough conquest, this, because I mean, medieval walls in that perimeter city. Really? Are you sure you want to use medieval walls? That doesn't feel like something that's that important. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kublai. Why has Kublai got to be the one that's interrupting our path? I and mean, we could just run straight through and go for Mandate China. I don't think it's going to be that much more of an easy fight. Lots more walls. Lots of pillaging there. I mean, there's lots of walls here as well. Thing is, remember, a horseman is about 300 and something gold? How much is that? 320. So if I stick the raid card in, all they've got to do is pillage a couple of tiles and they make their money back. That's what we're doing here. We are going on long-winded raiding missions. We're not really worried about too much else. A market it has finished quickly get a trader we will spread the good news to as many people as we can russia has mana arms good to know we, we should be expecting mana arms as a minimum resistance in any city that we fight i was just wondering to see if i could get a couple of units just to go and do some pillaging here i think we might struggle with that though rumor has it that russia has conquered a lost city huh whatever fight is going on here oh they might have pillaged and raised whatever this lost city was but we won't we won't argue against that or tell them they're going wrong. 
Feudalism. Okay, Equestrian Orders has been really handy, but I want to get rid of this card now. Instead, let's go for, I mean, this gold per turn is useless. Let's go Serfdom. Still have a Mad City State, so I'll put Charismatic Leader in. Probably should have done that a little bit ago, but never mind. And here is Feudal Contract, which is melee and ranged troops, which I always forget is useful because Bekeshig is a ranged troop. Plus, the knight is too powerful for the horsemen to really have an effect on. Well, now I've got Feudalism, Recorded History, Civil Service, Theology, Monarchy. Make me a king. Market finished. Ah, uh, there's only one way we can go really is Mongolia and that's Warlord's Throne. Let's get that in quickly. Oh, Kublai has muskets already. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I wanted to see. It's not what I wanted to see at all. All right, no worries. We'll we'll just keep working on the production of this. I'm going to have to get a spy up. With a spy and a trade route, I get plus 12 combat strength, which means my swordsman with a great general will have 17, or the man at arm as well. So they will be tougher than the black goons. What a name for a musket. <laughs> I love that. This is going to be so tricky. We're going to have to be on our absolute best pillaging behavior. The difficulty level on this game is just to a level that we haven't really seen seen before. We have met Japan. Maybe you'll be interested in conquering China. <laughs> we might have another ally. Oh yes, this is why I've been hunting around. Russia just leaves settlers open. They are just confused. The AI is confused by everyone fighting them right now. That's perfect. There was another settler over here I was bothering. Let's bring them, settle the other side of Dortmund. Dortmund is going to get lost to loyalty, so we're going to pick up another city from Germany without needing to do anything here, which is wonderful. And now this is where we can send more trade routes into Kublai and make sure that we have trading posts everywhere. These don't unfortunately stack. It's just having a trading post full stop. That's what gives you the combat strength. But that's okay. We can wait. We can be patient. Elizabeth has the most amazing I don't like you face. It's brilliant. Mass production boosted. I'm getting as many of these boosts as I can. Whilst I get the extra 10%, it's really, really good. This is all three inquiry for you. Barb Camp destroyed. Oh my goodness. That one was an absolute nightmare, but it's done. And Aksu is a little bit safer than it was a few turns ago. Oh, Japan already denounces me. Look, all I've done is steal a couple of cities. What really is that? A great general. This is my first medieval general. There's still one more to go. Maybe we can pinch it ahead of whoever this person is that we haven't met yet. But I mean, it might be tricky. But stirrups has been unlocked. Kashegs, knights. Oh, there's a lot to like here. I'm going to focus on unlocking the courser. And then we're going to go for printing. Printing gives me a level of diplomatic visibility. Now, probably Kublai already has has printing. I've got plus 12 on the movements at the moment though, so maybe they don't, but they will get it soon. The AI does like to go printing pretty rapidly. We'll have to keep an eye out and Kashig. Oh yeah, this is where we start to print units. Absolutely print them. I'm just hassling settlers. Hassling them left, right and centre. These Mongolian horsemen. Oh, you want peace, do you? That's good. If they want peace, actually what I can do is really cheeky. It's really cheeky. Let's kill the warrior, take the settler and then declare peace. Eh, 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 eh. Oh, two gold per turn. They want some. They want some recompense for that. Okay. How about some dip play favor instead? That's yeah. There we go. And now I'm three to take these settlers in total peace and not worry about them at all. So that's three cities I stole from Russia in one go there. And I'm gonna steal another one from Germany. Oh, considering I had such a rough start with the barbs, this is making me feel a lot better. Right now, there's the trade route down to Shendu. I mentioned this before, but I wanted to make sure that when I went to war with Kublai, I would always have somebody available to give me diplo visibility and that's what we've done now which is wonderful. Pingala is done, Victor pump you into my other unit producing city. We've got horsemen being pumped out, we've got Kashigs but I'm gonna also get some mana arms. We have a lot of promotions to do in a very short space of time. There's a mana arms, there's a mana arms. Our army is getting tough and strong. My first great merchant increases trade route capacity by one. Oh yeah, excellent stuff. That's what we want to see. So we're on some medieval merchants. It's not until later that merchants become really important. It's modern era. But this is why we're getting merchant points right now. I want to start building up that infrastructure. We've got another commercial hub being done there. Apart from camp, uh, encampments, it's going to be one of the most important districts that we build full stop. Uh, there's always one more Russian settler. <laughs> Never mind. I won't be greedy. I won't be greedy. They will accept what we've got as being good enough. The Kashig. It 
It's our unique unit. It's wonderful. It's like a crossbow, but it's stronger and it moves really fast and it can escort civilian and support units. It's amazing. I cannot tell you just how much I love them. That it is it is an unholy and ridiculous amount. One thing I've noticed, Kublai's army military strength, it's going down every turn and mine is going up. I am just about to take over in terms of military strength. Oh, that's something you like to see, isn't it? Lovely. And another trade route now as well. Oh, I'm going to just keep sending them to you, Kublai. There's no harm in it. As soon as war is declared, I will be able to pick them up and then pick my next target and then we'll go from there. I think it might be this China is the next one. My main objective, by the way, is to unify China. I feel like if I can do that, that'll be quite fun. The Warlord's Throne is now finished. I need to spy as quickly as possible. As soon as we unlock Monarchy, I'll be putting in the Intelligence Agency. I could get Grandmaster's Chapel and then use Pillaged Faith to produce more army. That is a really good strategy, but it's not one I'm going to be doing today. Garrison Commander Victor. Yep, go on, man. We need to just make sure the spies are of max level. And another city. This is on top of Thur as well. Beautiful. Fair settlement on Northeast Asia. Just settling it is worth 200 gold. Yes. Watch Kublai's army. Yep, 366 went to 344. They are fighting. Who are they fighting? Everyone. Oh, I love it. Yes. This is exactly what you want to see. Chaos. Chaos on all fronts. So we've now, we're four turns away from courses. I think I'm going to wait on my attack until I unlock courses. That feels like a good time to strike, doesn't it? It really does. Knight in 10 turns. I might buy myself a knight rather than anything else. I think in order to make money, you've got to spend money on tiles to get the luxuries, which then I end up selling on the market. I think, yeah, look, that's a good profit there. We're just saving up gold now. Courses. That's what we need. Courses over. Everywhere. Spies are already targeting my city. There is nothing I can do about that. Nothing I can do about it. I don't even know what spies are. I guess I could put a diplomatic quarter down, but again, I don't know what those are. We'll unlock that in a second, I'm sure. Dear oh dear, the AI. Just being cruel. Ten population, capital, civil service, castles, everything is coming online. You at war with any of my allies. Oh, you are. Oh, Germany. A military alliance. Oh, go on then. And we'll go for maybe research alliance with Korea. Yeah. Uh, Spear was like a research alliance. Perfect. We've got loads of boosts coming along. And monarchy. So close. So close. How much is a Corsa upgrade? 250 gold. You've got to be kidding me. Do I go mercenaries and unlock that? No, I don't think it's worth it. I think we might have to just sell some resources, get a bunch of gold and go for it. Although it depends if anyone's going to actually buy my horses. Now the world is pretty chocker full of them. Ugh, don't think about it, Ursa. Don't think about it. Just take the hit. These promoted horsemen, it's worth it. Corsa's away more powerful. Might as well go in soon, you know? Is there any point in waiting? The pillaging. That's what I'm after, the pillaging. That's the main goal here. Well, we're still settling and this counts as being a little bit close to Russia. Oh, I actually hadn't discovered their city, so doesn't count as being close to them. Never mind. Oh, iron sells for more. Iron sells for way more. All right, I'm just going to get rid of some resources here. There are things like catapults that I can build which don't take any resources that are just as important. There's another one. Here's another one. All right, everyone's upgraded. Yeah, let's, let's just go next turn. Turn 104, 300 BC, the attack on Kublai will commence very, very soon. China is still just chaos. Everyone is fighting everyone. We are wading in. Oh, look, Russia, you don't need to worry about where I'm settling, okay? I'm everywhere. I'm omnipotent. Omni awesome. I'm awesome in every single scenario simultaneously. Oh, apart from that, my scout just died, but don't worry about that. That's got nothing to do with anything. <laughs> <laughs> France is against England. Everyone's attacking everyone. I love the chaos. Oh, isn't it great that I've even got a delicious and lovely road just built for me that all of my troops can go down. I'll go on then. Charge with my crazy fast units. Let's do it. Once more into the breach. So as I sell an olive, what I realize is that there are a few people that hate my guts. <laughs> wait, wait, I've got, I've got a point here. I have a bunch of luxuries and normally, yeah, look at that. They trade their luxuries for almost no money whatsoever so we can actually do a th almost like a better than three for one deal oh yes you can grunt at me all you like elizabeth but that is wonderful unfortunately we seem to have pushed to about plus one or plus two in a lot of cities so that has not helped me at all but it might do so you can see my capital what i'm doing is building a battering ram i'm going to escort it with this kashig because the kashig will give the movement to it so i can bring it to the front line really quickly but before i leave my territory oh, just another drought what is it with droughts and this huge 
huge desert. Who would have thought? What I'm going to do is just wait in my territory before I leave and upgrade it to the siege tower. So I've got one of those before we go over. Feudal contract is amazing. Don't get me wrong, but raid. Oh, now raid is what I want. Raid is the thing that I'm really excited about. So serfdom is still quite useful. Urban planning is quite useful. The gold is good. I prefer the production. We're going to yeah, be waiting a ton extra for our Kashyyyks. It's not great. But as I send my last trade route through, and I think I'll send it to this city, give myself the medieval fares boost quickly. I think the time has now come to join in on the war with my military ally. When it's an emergency war. Uh, interesting. Why do I have to pay to join in with your war? I don't, I don't agree to that. Actually, Korea will just go to war with me full stop. All right. Yep, yeah, that works too. So my economy is going to take a massive hit because all of my trade routes have returned, but I didn't lose any of them. That's the best bet. Now we just go around and we see, is there anyone else? Anyone at all that wants to join in on this war? Go on. It's the everyone jumping on Kublai time. He's evil. 156 science. We can't let him get away with that. No, I fully expect this to be a little bit horrific. The attacks are going to be devastating, but you can see we have boiled it down to a plus six intel. They don't have printing. We don't have printing. They haven't got a spy. I haven't got a spy. So, so far, so good. But it doesn't mean I can't be raiding all of these walls. And that's exactly what we want to see. Pillage. Pillage is the main and only reason that we are here right now. I haven't brought any siege equipment. We're unlikely to have much in the way of siege equipment. Actually, that's a lie. Maybe the Kashigs could do a little bit of damage to the walls. They do level up really nicely if you keep attacking with them. But mostly, I might just keep them a little bit further back and wait. Because they might take a bit of damage. Yeah, but they, they're going to distract the enemy. Oh, there's, there's 101 different ways to play this. I don't know what the best way is. There's oh, pike and shot. We need to be a little bit careful about pike and shot 80 strength wars of religion oh they've got the wars of religion card in because we're a different government have they actually gone they haven't gone theocracy but they have gone monarch oh my goodness it's it's weird to see the ai actually using these sort of cards like i love it and finally a very special shout out goes to glorious petra matthew wilkinson paul coffee portland clint Hennis, scott stratton major king kong skeptical bear cinnamon beard petra ryan radiatore private selection genoa salami callum billy garrett gowan paul Bere, El Truant, Creston, RB Hedged, Mushkin Mandeltort, Debel Time, Burial, I'm Daft, Gooberman, Dr. Bobby, Polar Wallabear, Mixamatosis, NTG Golfman, Victor McPupster, Indigenous 68, Technology Poet, Teddy Zursa, Zaf, Barnaby Rex, Sharky Bates, Charlie Bears, I Love You Tombo, Flying Dutch Burbs. Thank you everyone for your support. See you all in the next video. Goodbye.